Hey, what's up, fellas? This video is for Eric and for Bill. A little bit in there for you, too, brother. Um, we all know the song and dance. When you're doing research and development or any type of experimentation, you come up with a design, a way you want to do something, you go out, you order the parts, you wire them up, and you flip the switch, and the damn thing doesn't work at all. Like, what is going on here? I've got a PWM, I've got a 12 volt power source, I've got a fuel pump, and nothing is working right. Uh, me and Bill had the same problem with these pumps um, the other day. We were doing some work, and we ended up trying out two different pumps, and we couldn't get either of them to work. I'm starting to think I'm losing my mind. I finally ended up having to build a bypass valve to get the thing to work, and come to find out this entire time, the problem here is the PWM. See how the flame's pulsating? And a very, like, not even a very, you know, cycled pattern. When you turn it up high, you can't see it as much. I'm just trying to mess with it here and see what I can make happen. But when I turn it down, now watch what happens. See how it's sputtering? That's the PWM. It is putting out a sine wave in synchrony with those pulses that you see. And they are not even either. They look like this. We're putting off a sine wave that looks like this. It's very, it's got like a strange bump to it. And then it's not even the same distance apart sometimes. A very erratic sine wave. Bill, me and you were seeing this phenomenon on the oxygen burner we were testing. See how it's pulsating? It's going from high to low. Well, here, I'll get it to set to do that. That's what we were seeing. However, I can say, Eric, the vibration aspects of this are looking pretty good. So far, I'm not seeing any subtle jarring knocking this thing out. We just got to get the fuel pump situation dealt with. This is the vibration test I'm doing to see if we can cause the burner to go out. Sometimes high vibrations and jarring can shut the fuel off momentarily, causing it to go out. This is five minutes later, the second part of the test. Got some new World Order Harp weather action. It's now 60 degrees, it was 106. What's going on is these PWMs don't always work. I've had success with them in the past, but two in a row, we're putting off a sine wave that looks like this. So we're not gonna be able to properly meter fuel with a PWM that's operating like this. So this thing's out of the picture. Um, so what I've done here is built a bypass valve on this thing, but I'm gonna be running it with this constant voltage transformer. These are very neat transformers. Um, and what they can do is put out a constant voltage and a constant amperage regardless of what happens over here. It will compensate for any change and keep the voltage at exactly what you set it at. And that's very important in electrolysis processes and, and lab work. Unfortunately, this is a $250 transformer. So using it as a motor speed controller is less than ideal. However, let me show you that it does give superb control. Let me go ahead and turn the amps all the way up. We're at 6 amps, 12 volts. I'm going to turn the voltage way down. You can hear the pitch going down. There's the flow gauge. Okay, so we're at 2 volts. And as you can see, we're getting a pretty steady flow right there. There is almost no undulation in that. Very hard to do at even smaller flow rates. We're, that is a lot of power we're pumping right there. But when it comes to very small flows, this still isn't doable. And this is a huge problem when you're looking to get a very small flow. So check that out. That's where we're at. 
at two volts on this transformer. Not a very ideal setting. Motors don't like running on such low current sometimes. The slightest little air bubble or who knows what can disarm this pumping action. We get an air. It cannot reprime itself in some situations at such low operating levels. So, so I'm going to attempt to bring it down to 1.5 volts. It may drop the pin altogether. Looks like we're about to drop it. And again, as you can see, with this type of transformer, we have some very smooth flow action there. Moving around just a little bit, but far better than what we would have been getting out of this thing. But still, this is a lot of power. This is way too much in most cases, and this puts the pump in a dangerous operating condition. So what we're gonna do now is we're going to set the bypass system up. We're gonna run this pump at full power. Well, I'm gonna turn it up to about 13 because that's the actual voltage this thing's gonna be running on with an alternator system. We're at 6.7 amps there. Tremendous amount of flow. We're off the scale. Let's take a look at that. This is well over a thousand horsepower. That is a lot. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna open this bypass valve all the way. Just gonna purge all that air out of there. Okay, so we're now going to close this valve and we're going to see this start to drop. I can now set that valve with this here with absolute control. I was able to set that. As you can see, it is an extremely low flow. So much so that it can't even be very easily examined. We're pouring out of the tube there. So we were able to do what the transformer could not do. Simply by toggling this valve. So to increase the pressure, let's say we needed more pressure. What we would do is close this bypass valve, and that's going to bring the pressure up. Okay, so now we're at about 20 psi. And as you can see, that has brought the flow rate up to here. We've now got a little bit of pressure behind that. That's how you set the pressure. And you can set that pressure to any pressure you want. You have complete total control of that by this valve here. Okay, let me get some better uh, thread sealant going here and we'll resume this test. I'm leaking diesel. Okay, so I'm gonna close this valve gently and increase the pressure to 10 PSI so that I know we have plenty of back pressure. Okay, so I have a very small fuel flow going here. It's an extremely small amount. It is very hard to meter fuel at a reasonable pressure at such a low flow rate. We're still at pressure. We're at about 10 PSI's, which means we got plenty of back pressure to run some type of little combustor or whatever we're doing here. So let's get a flow rate reading. We can do less than this. I can do less than this with this valve too. It's just kind of touchy 
it's hard to, to toggle it with one hand. I got a camera in my hand here, so I can't show it to you on the fly. But you get the point that the parameters of this pump's functionality are huge. This thing can do it all. Okay, Eric, you're gonna wanna be running at about 400 kilowatt or so, according to what I've seen in some of your test videos you've sent me and some of the testing that I've done here. So I'm gonna turn the power on to this thing. We're gonna get pumping here at full power. You're probably gonna be running at about 13 some volts on your system. We're gonna bring this to about 0.6 liters per minute. Right about right there. And that's gonna be about our 400 kilowatt zone, which is where you're probably gonna to wanna to be running this thing. So, to achieve that, I'm just gonna open this bypass valve about halfway to start so I don't overpressure anything. We're gonna get all the air out of there first. Getting your fuel system primed is gonna be kind of a, a pain in the neck, but you gotta do it. All right now, I've got this bypass valve fully open. I'm gonna close this valve to bring the power down. Now, obviously, when you start off, you're not gonna have all burners going at one time. So this is gonna pressure up on you a little bit. So make sure all your hoses are nice and tight. Otherwise, because this thing can do about 45 PSIs. All right, this is making for a boring video at this point. You get the point the damn thing can be set wherever you want it. And that's just by touching this valve. So in the event you got some serious back pressure, we would simply drop this valve back and close it a little bit. And that causes a static pressure loop that's continually going in this direction here through the pump. This is our flow valve. This is the bypass valve. We are at zero pressure. About 12.5 volts, constant current. I don't know why it ain't letting me go to constant voltage. You're more likely probably gonna be running in this area if you're connected to an alternator. And as you can see, that brought us up. Well, no, it didn't. Nonetheless, there you go, fellas. I decided I'm gonna start selling this thing on eBay because over the years before I learned how to build it, it was impossible to find a pump that can do all the things that we've seen. And most of all, it's impossible to find a high pressure, low flow pump. It really is. You can do this with a pressure washer pump also. So, now that we've got this pump problem figured out, we're gonna disconnect this test and we're going back outside to do the vibration test on the burner. Unfortunately, that's, it's like one o'clock in the morning. So that's gonna have to be in tomorrow's video, fellas. But, um, Eric, I'm throwing you in a box, brother. And um, you're gonna be shipped off before that video airs. Bill, I did this for you, man. After what me and you went through the other day, um, I definitely wanted to get to the bottom of that. And it turns out it was these PWMs. They were not giving us the right pulse width in the modulation. So that's all I got today, fellas. Eric, thanks for the business, man. I'm glad to hear the machine's still running. This thing is going to really make you a lot happier about the situation with the, uh, the vibration problems.